Mad Max. Max Scherzer was ejected on Wednesday for sticky stuff, according to Phil Cuzzy, when it was really just sweat and rosin. Phil, what are you doing? Luckily, the Mets are resilient. They come back from that and win the game. They win the series in Los Angeles over the Dodgers. They take two out of three. And boy, what a win it was. We will react to that Scherzer ejection. We'll play Max is post game reaction. We'll play Bucks comments after the game and talk about a wild series in LA. We also will play the rest of our interview with Daniel Murphy. The video is out, but if you miss the rest of the audio, we'll play the second half of that on this episode. And we air our interview with Kodai Sanga's translator, Hiro Fujiwara. You'll hear that interview with me and Nelson Figueroa, and you'll hear a jam packed episode of amazing but true from the new york post and it's coming up next Ooh, welcome back to amazing but true our new york mets podcast from the new york post those highlights you just heard courtesy of sny as the mets beat noah syndergaard and the dodgers they take two out of three in hollywood hollywood swinging two of the three very entertaining games as well monday was a fantastic back and forth wednesday a great game with a big storyline. We'll get into a second. Max Scherzer's veins are popping as we speak. It's Jake Brown here. Follow me on Twitter at Jake Brown Radio. Follow the podcast at Amazing But True. You can watch the full Daniel Murphy interview on the New York Post Sports YouTube fa- page. Find that Amazing But True playlist. We'll play the part of it you didn't hear in the audio side. In the audio version coming up a little bit later in the show. We'll also air our interview with Hiro Fujiwara the translator of Kodai Senga, who will pitch Thursday. As many of you hear this, when the Mets head to San Fran to take on the Giants, he pitches. You hear from the translator in just a little bit as well. But the story at hand here, we got to get right into the nitty gritty. The Mets win five for five for Brandon Nemo. What a day for him. He gets hurt, but he's okay in the ninth inning on a slide. Mark Canna gets hurt on the ninth inning, but it seems like he's okay on a slide, a home plate. And Starling Marte had to leave the game early due to a stiff neck. So everyone's banged up. I was convinced I was going to get hurt walking to the fridge to get my bottle of water. Luckily, I'm okay to do this show, but that's the way things are going for the Mets. Carlos Carrasco headed to the IL. It seems like Joey Lucchese is going to be his replacement and pitch Friday in San Francisco. We'll see how long Carrasco's out for. It seems like Justin Verlander is going to be first week or second week of May for his return. So the Mets are the walking wounded, but they're finding ways to win. Led by chicken parm god Jimmy Yacobonis, who came in for Max Scherzer. The middle relief got it done. Jeff Brigham, back-to-back days, getting it done. So Drew Smith, getting it done. David Robertson, proving he's human as he gives up his first run of the year. And the Mets still find a way to win. They are 12 and 7, 19 games into the season. A great series win for the boys. I mean, this was a big one, but let's get right into the big story. Max Scherzer gets checked after the second inning. They make him switch gloves. You know, he says it's just rosin and sweat. Gets checked again after the third inning. Comes out for the bottom of the fourth, gets checked. They said, bang, you're out of here. Phil Cuzzy, known for this stuff. He's the only guy to do it in the big leagues. Three times, three ejections, all Phil Cuzzy. Something suspicious there about Phil Cuzzy because no one else has done it except for him, and that's alarming. And both Buck and Scherzer obviously addressed Phil Cuzzy because he was the story after the game. Let's start with Andrew Hart's our producer here with me. Let's start Hart with playing the max audio because these were some strong words talking about his children involved and talking about what he had what the whole story was let's play what max scherzer said after the game wednesday after he was ejected so after the second inning uh you know my hand it was a little clumpy uh from the rosin and sweat that it was clumpy and phil was told me to wash off so i washed it off uh you know came back out there after the third you know with alcohol you know i washed it with alcohol um and rosin and when i went back out there um, you know, the alcohol for a little bit there can be sticky if, in rosin. It, that can happen. So he was like, that's too sticky. You need to go back on there, wash it off again, and reapply uh, the rosin. 
And so I did that, and then at the same time, you thought my glove had too much rosin on it. And I was like, okay, if that's a problem, you know, there's there's nothing going on. It, you know, he's like, you need a new glove. Like, okay. So I come back out, uh, pitch the third, uh, and knew I was going to get checked in the fourth. So I, I'd have to be an absolute idiot to do try to do anything when I'm coming back out for the fourth. So in, in the in the you know after that third inning. Um, I'm in front of the MLB official that's, that's underneath here. I wash my hand with alcohol in front of the official. Um, I then apply a rosin, and then I grab sweat. Um, when I, then, I then go back out there, and Phil Cuzzy says that my hand's too sticky. Uh, I, I don't get it. Yes, when you use sweat and rosin, your hand is sticky. But I don't get how I get ejected when I'm, when I'm in front of MLB officials doing exactly exactly what you want and being deemed my hands too sticky when i'm using legal substance i do not understand that yeah absolute buffoonery by phil cousy let's keep it 100 here max scherzer should not have been ejected and the rule says that you know he he might end up facing a 10 game suspension which would be absolutely a joke like you know he's not lying and he's right who would go out there a second straight inning and use anything that was prohibited like he would be a fool to do that he's max scherzer He's been in the league forever. The guy's been ejected for the first time in his life during, you know, while he's pitching. He's been ejected a couple of the times, both while he was in the dugout. So this is the first time, and he had a right to be mad. I'm a little surprised Buck didn't scream either at the at the umpires and say something because, you know, you thought Buck might have defended him hard there, but, you know, it's a tough situation. Buck didn't know what was going on. He he didn't know who to believe. Obviously, the, Phil Cuzzy's in the wrong here. Let's play what Buck had to say after the game because buck also had some strong words what you saw and what happened um from when max was asked to switch his glove leading up to the ejection i will let it run its course i'm not going to walk back through that and everything uh you know we'll uh let it run its course we feel pretty comfortable about what went on where max is concerned what did they say he was ejected for uh well he's using rosin what's on the field and uh, that's you know it's a substance that's very legal wiped it off washed it I don't know. You have to. Phil's certainly uh, been a guy that's been known for that. So we'll see. If Phil thought there was something there. Why initially did he send him back out for a different glove, and then the second time eject him? He just didn't like that there were rosin on his hand. And uh, you know, yeah, you have to ask him. You know, I, I've, I've got. I'm uh, biased, but it was a great game. Really proud of our guys. What a what a team effort. That's as good a game as you want to see. You know, through that adversity. So very upbeat clubhouse right now phil cuzzy you're a loser i mean you're just an absolute loser i mean phil cuzzy this is a classic situation of an umpire making the game about himself and thinking he has this higher up authority over everyone else it's sweat and rosin give me a break it's gonna be naturally a little sticky that's just how it is like i'm no baseball player but that's just common sense it's common sense. What an absolute joke. And, you know, in the other, in the other audio of Max, he said, you know, I'm not going to address too much because it's going to become a legal thing, you know, with MLB getting involved. If he were to potentially get suspended, you know he's going to appeal and he deserves to win the appeal if it even gets to that point. You know, we'll see what officials say about this, but what a joke. And there's certain things in baseball you understand. You understand them cracking down on certain things, but – this is getting out of hand with some of these things. And Phil Cuzzy, this is completely out of hand. Max Scherzer belonged in that game, and he was dealing. You know, he got through some trouble in the first inning base. Loda got out of it, and he was dealing. And this hurts a team like this, because the Mets don't have days off here. They got four in San Francisco. They got to blow through all their bullpen. These guys are gas, and they, this, can, this is a trickle-down effect that hurts a team without days off using – using relievers day after day after day. And I've already talked about in the show how the Mets have bad middle relief. Listen, they, they pitch well, but you know, this is going to come back to bite them. And now with Carrasco out, you got the little Casey Friday. You might need relievers Friday. This is just ugly. And what a bizarre scene that happened there. I mean, you just don't see this ever. So a bizarre situation for the Mets. They end up getting the win and a win is a win, baby. Get the win. And in honor of two out of three here, amazing but true, we put on our two chains. Here's one for Monday's 
eight, six win an absolute shootout on Monday. The offense got it done. The team kept coming back. They were down, came back down, came back. It was a very 2022 like Mets win a team that was resilient and fought back. Good eight, six win on Monday. Listen, the pitching wasn't great, but the bats are alive. Pete keeps Homer and Lindor keeps Homer and everyone keeps it. And everyone's involved. That's Monday's win. Listen, Tuesday was vintage Clayton Kershaw absolutely dealing over this Mets lineup. It was his 200th career win. The Mets beat him when it mattered most in the playoffs in 2015, but the future Hall of Famer, his his off-speed stuff, his curve was just filthy. Mets couldn't score a run on Tuesday. But Wednesday, despite the Max Scherzer ejection, the resilient Mets do it again. And this chain is for Wednesday's 5-3 win. Brandon Nimmo, a 5-for-5 day, a huge two-run homer. That was the difference. They get insurance in the eighth. They get insurance in the ninth. And they needed it because, you know, a home run in the bottom of the ninth off out of Eno, a run in the bottom of the eighth. They needed those insurance runs. So this second chain goes to that. Two wins, three games. Before the Mets now head to San Francisco, open your hospital. Do, 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 do. Look that up if you don't know that. Only the real ones know that was on the Major League Baseball Greatest Hits album. Is a uh, song of you know baseball moments and, and great baseball songs. And uh, in the fifth uh, hearts, you might remember this one from last year. I, I you see if you could pull up the song that that's from. Um, bottom of the ninth, four to nothing, last chance. Push the button. Oh, they're pleading, they're begging, they're on. Uh, you, know, you flat push, you refugees. Maury Wills at bat. Mm, hit it for me once. Mm, Stu Miller throws. Maury bunts. So Peter runs to feel the ball and all this. Hella, hella, mala, hella, Miller, hollas, hella, hella, hollas, Miller, Miller, holla, hella. Da, 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 da. All right, that's enough. But look that up for you baseball fans. It's on the greatest hits album. And it relates because the Mets are on the West Coast. They were in LA. They beat those dim bums, those Dodgers. And out of San Francisco, where Kodai Senga takes the hill on Thursday in the first of four against the sizzling hot J.D. Davis. Michael Conforto, who homers on Wednesday, of course. Darren Ruff, who's hitting. I mean, that J.D. Davis trade looks worse and worse by the day. My God. I mean, you got prospects and J.D. Davis for Darren Ruff. That is called a fleecing. And imagine J.D. Davis right now, the right-hand bat you could use. I have mentioned it. But, like, Vogelback continues to struggle a bit here. I know he had the big homer the other night, but, you know, he has been struggling. And they have not gotten a lot of contributions out of DH, and they could use a guy like J.D. Davis, man. You know, luckily Tommy Pham and the big uh, sack fly on Wednesday give them that insurance run in the eighth. But, yeah, they could really use guys like that. But they go to San Francisco and Kodai Senga Thursday. Likely Luke Casey will pitch Friday. And, uh, you know, just keep winning series. It's Thursday at, at 9.45, Friday at 10.15, Saturday at 4.05, and we'll be back, me and Nelson Figueroa, Sunday, 7.08 p.m. game. So hopefully we'll be recording Sunday night, a little late night, midnight recording, and drop it for first thing, 5 a.m. on Monday. But I do have the new Kodai Senga Ghost Forkball t-shirt from Athlete Logos. You see on the video here, we have the... Ghost Forkball shirt that you saw Tyler McGill wearing. So big drip, little drip, same shirt. That's right. It uh, might be the only thing we have in common. <laughs> uh, but here it is. It is a beauty. God, it is a cozy shirt. I'm going to wear this every time he probably pitches at City Field. I got to rock this. So maybe the next homestand, we'll see you next week at City Field. So speaking of Kodai Sango, we had the chance, me and Nelson Figueroa, here at Amazing But True, to chat with his translator. Everyone wants to talk about Kodai, but what about Hero? You can be our hero. Hero Fujiwara. We spoke with him on the field last week at City Field, and here is our interview with Hero. Jake Brown, Nelson Figueroa, Amazing But True Podcast, New York Post, here with Hero Fujiwara, the translator of Kodai. Now it's Kodai. Kodai. Kodai Sanga. No one gets to talk to you, and you're like a cool guy, and like you're just like... A cool guy, and like we want to talk to you. Uh, what's life been like coming to New York? You know, being the translator for a guy who could be the lead of the rotation after you know Scherzer, Verlander are gone. It's his rotation. What's life been like for you? Really exciting to watch him pitch. I mean, I'm just as much of a fan as you guys are, as everyone is. So 
Um, I have a lot of fun watching him. It's really cool being in the clubhouse, being close to him, working with him. Not only him, but the rest of the team, really. It's a really exciting team, and I'm really excited for the season and see where it goes. Yeah. What's uh, your baseball background? I played up in Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, just a high school, but I um, played baseball my whole life, so I love it. Oh, it's a great way to get involved. I tell people all the time, baseball, there's so many other opportunities, so many other jobs besides actually being on the field. Translators are a huge part of the game now. And they're, you, know, you really need to have those access to those players, the foreign players, even the guys who speak Spanish. We had it for years with Professor Reyes, with Jose Reyes. His English wasn't the best, but he always gave it a good try. So having a translator who knows the game of baseball, that's essential. It's really good. I'm still learning every day, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot to the game of baseball. Yep. I hope to be more knowledgeable tomorrow than I am today, so just keep working at it. The Ghost Forkball has transformed the baseball world as we know it. The shirts, big drips, rocking the shirt. Uh, has he taught you how to throw it, and have you figured it out yet? Even if I try, I don't think I could. It's <laughs> it's a magical pitch, really. Watching it from behind, the first time I saw it, my jaw dropped. Like It's incredible. What makes it so special? Like I don't know if it's the grip, the fact that it disappears. like. It's just a mystifying pitch. Like, what makes it so special? Maybe I shouldn't tell you. Ah, see? A true professional, the secret, <laughs> yeah. How do you say, let's go Mets in Japanese? Ikimashou Mets. One more time. Ikimashou Mets. Ikimashou Mets. Ikimashou Mets. Now, he teaches me Spanish every... Maybe I should speak Two Japanese. Two seconds of Japanese and now all of a sudden... I Japanese. can't roll my R, so I can't speak Spanish. So maybe I should learn Japanese. And that's, that's the way we do it. Well, uh, we're excited. What do you think of this Mets team? They're fun. What do you think of Buck Showalter and the team? It's a lot of fun, like you said. Um, a really a lot of a bunch of exciting guys. I mean, Buck Buck knows what he's doing, obviously. I mean, I'm not the one to talk about <laughs> anything he does. A um, bunch of professionals. I'm and I'm ex I'm excited to be here. I'm a how old are you now here? I'm 24. 24. So you're living wow. the dream right now. I am. I right. Am. Absolutely. What What would you be doing if you didn't weren't the translator for Senga? You know, what was your backup? Do you have a backup career? What are we going to do? I mean, I have no idea. Uh, Literally no out. idea. Literally no idea. You hit the lottery. I did. <laughs> yeah, what, what a life. 24 years old. I was probably hung over after a college party or something. And here we are. Here at Fujiwara, excited to uh, see what Sanga does, we'll see what the Mets does, and keep throwing the ghost fork ball. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All righty. Some great stuff there from Hero Fuji. I mean, I mean Hero Fujiwara, this kid is 24 years old, and he's a translator for a phenom here in New York, and a guy who's going to be here a while. What a life. He's, you heard he played baseball, gave up that. Taught me how to say let's go Mets in Japanese. Clearly, my Japanese is better than my Spanish. You can tell that. Not surprising. There's no R rolling in that. So I'm going to say let's go Mets in Japanese. Dakota, I when. Uh, next time we're on the field, I will say that, and maybe he'll be impressed by my Japanese. But he is fun to watch. So you'll have the ghost fork ball on Thursday, and you'll have the slurve with Joey Lucchese. And I just spit, as I said, slurve. That is a tongue twister on Friday. So a couple nasty pitches coming for the Mets this weekend. And we will look forward to that. All righty. Great stuff there from Hiro Fuji. Wara, as that says, good night to episode 138 of Amazing But True, our New York Mets podcast from the New York Post. Thanks to Andrew Hartz for helping me produce the show as always. Subscribe to Amazing But True on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Amazon, wherever you get podcasts. Give us a five star rating, write in a nice review. We appreciate your support. And subscribe to the New York Post Sports YouTube page. Find that Amazing But True playlist. Follow the playlist, subscribe. It'll come up. It'll come up on your feed. You can watch full episodes. You're missing a lot. If you're not watching any of the videos, full episodes, clips, exclusives, the full Murphy interview, you get it all there. You know, give us a thumbs up on this video and right below. what do you think of the Max Scherzer, you know, ejection? You know, did you think it was buffoonery? Give us your thoughts about Phil Cuzzy. Sound off on Phil Cuzzy. And what do you think about that loser? Follow us on Twitter at Jake Brown Radio. Follow the show at Amazing But true the Mets go to San Francisco the Knicks got game three of the playoffs on Friday I'll be there Friday and Sunday at the Garden's going to be absolutely buzzing the Rangers heading into Thursday are up one nothing on the Devils the Islanders are in the playoffs right now playing it is a busy time here in the New York sports scene show a Otani's hitting homers in the Bronx hopefully he'll be hitting homers as a New York Met next year 
at City Field. New York sports is thriving, and hopefully the Knicks and Rangers can move on to the second round, and we'll have that going with the New York Mets. But, man, it felt good to beat Syndergaard. It felt good to win a series over a really good team in the Dodgers. You know, early on it was like people were all concerned, and we are still concerned because there's a lot of injuries the Mets are dealing with right now. And let's hope Joey Lucchese could step in and be okay. Let's hope Justin Verlander is actually back around Cinco de Mayo time to return or to debut for the Mets because they need him. You know, with Carrasco, you know, this Carrasco injury could be longer, could end up being a season ending if he ends up opting for surgery. We'll see. The Mets need guys to step up, and Lucas is kind of the last guy in the radar here. You talk about all these guys they have. You went to McGill. You went to Peterson. Now you're going to Lucas. There's not much more down there in the minors, so the Mets can't afford to lose anyone. They can't afford for a Scherzer suspension, which I don't think will happen. And these guys got to get back. For Daniel Murphy, Hiro Fujiwara, Andrew Hartz, I'm Jake Brown. We'll be back on Monday, me and Nelson Figueroa. As we react to the Mets series in the Bay against the Giants and a lot of old friends, you know, win this series, please. Because if we got to lose to Michael Conforto, J.D. Davis and Darren Ruff, you know, I'm going to lose some sleep. So enjoy the four game series. Enjoy the Knicks playoffs, the Rangers playoffs, the Islanders playoffs. And thank you so much for listening to Amazing But True. And we'll close it out like we always do. It'll be in unison because it's just me. Let's go Mets.